Hello and welcome to the Consistently OK podcast. I'm Luke Barnes and I'm joined as ever with Nick Writer Extraordinaire Good. This episode we're in depth again and we're doing Viewers Skew Universe films under Kevin Smith and it's more rats. So let's go back to 1995 and I think a film that was ahead of its time and talk about that. Let's go. just to uh i'll give a little bit of context shall i as to why we've been gone because we had a very big break between season two and season three and then there was another break because you know life and children get poorly and chicken boxing about anyway so then i i went and i i got knocked unconscious in football the barbaric game of football and i lost my memory for a while my short-term memory and um you forgot about it me. slowly came back over time i forgot about the podcast nick yeah. was just waiting for me <laughs> yeah. for days weeks on end yeah. and then it just hit me like a light bulb like oh shit i'm gonna record a podcast <laughs> um so yeah it's taken me a while to get back to a, a good place and um anyway i'm here my memory is intact and we are um we're gonna pick up where we left off we've already done the clerks one so if you haven't listened to that you can go back we're talking about kevin smith's films and we're gonna go through the majority well at least the main films from his viewers universe during this season so we're on more rats nick we are yeah which we is, are yeah that's a that's an old film now isn't it it is i think it got it recently is. though i think that it, i don't know if it was a criterion collection or arrow film it might have been arrow films released it with like really cool artwork so i feel like it's topical because i think it uh, released in like the last like two years or something so nice yeah. i mean it's a it's a cult classic isn't it or it's yeah known as a cult classic yeah. But oh, when it came out, mm, did not do very well, did it? No, no, which is sad because no. it, it is. I feel like if it came out today, it would have a really big audience, right? I think it would too. I mean, that's what I said yeah. in the intro. I think it was a bit, it's, uh, it was ahead of its time. Definitely, yeah. I mean, definitely ahead of its time in terms of a few films that came out years after, like the mm. first sort of humor that's in it. But we'll, we'll get there. Let's a little bit of background. I'm doing a lot with my hands, so if we're showing <laughs> this on YouTube afterwards, people are going to be like, he's still got head injury. Um, <laughs> he's Dr. Strange. And, and the hand injury. Yes, that's <laughs> yeah. right. A glass cabinet destroyed my arm and hand and leg as well. It's been a weird month. Anyway, um, so Kevin Smith did Clerks, pretty much paid for most of it off his own back. A lot of credit cards were used. Clerks was very, very well received. Um, and got Kevin Smith some attention and I'm pretty sure it was universal um then gave him the option of making a film off yeah. the back of clerks and that was more rats and it was a yeah, big it was... risk for Kevin Smith he had never done a big big time film yep was this one with and Miramax as you... well or is it just universal I think Miramax I think no I don't think Miramax because clerks was with Miramax wasn't it was yeah, it? I think. Because I, I know Chasing Amy was, they, was, and then Chasing Amy because Chasing Amy like... came because I think it was Universal for More Rats, and then it it bombed at the box office, and then I think Miramax came in, or there was some there was some something that led to Kevin Smith going back to Miramax, and they gave him like he had whatever he wrote, Miramax got first option on it, and. They financed him and they said that they would let him do this and that. And mm -hmm. I think there was some, I think he found it quite, there was some tough times with Universal about who he wanted in the film. I know there was um, like Jay getting, Jay, I think Jay, Jason Mewes had to actually audition for Jay. That's weird. That's, that's odd. Mm. So, uh, and there was a few, a few, I don't know how 
much I remember. I remember reading a lot of things around it at the time, and I've read a bit recently as well, but not this bit, but that, you know, Jason Lee, he, I think he nearly bombed his audition as well. But Kevin Smith liked him quite a lot. Um, so, yeah, so Kevin Smith didn't have as much sway with Universal, but I think Miramax came around, I think he did, and hence why, you know, Dogma got made and all those things. So, awesome. more rats, though. Yes. Big, big, big time for Kevin Smith after Clerks. He obviously has uh, a few of the cast members and clerks come back. So that's always yeah. nice to have your friends around. And um, and it released in the cinemas and it didn't do very well. No. For Kevin Smith. Yeah. But it is popular now. Uh, yes. Like it gathered over time. It gathered a lot of momentum. And I, I did read recently Kevin Smith say that it was um, clerks was like a lottery ticket. And every time you scratched it, you it was like winning the lottery because good things were happening. But with more rats, it was like the opposite experience that it just felt like everything went, got worse and worse. Hmm. But I mean, first, I mean, what do you think about more rats, Nick? Like, where does it stand with you? Is it like, a, does it resonate with you? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, it's always a film that's, again, like a lot of the, the viewer skew films, it's really quotable. Um, mm-hmm. and And I think. I, I can't remember the first time I watched it, but I must have been like 12, 13, somewhere around there. Um, yeah. And I remember enjoying it back then just because it was quirky and it was unusual and had Stan Lee in it. Um, and Stan Lee, looking good, eh? Yeah. And it was, yeah, it was, just, it was just one of those things where it was kind of like at the time, I just remember really enjoying it. Um, and then I hadn't watched it for maybe like 10 years um, at this point. Um, and going back to it, it is really odd because it does kind of speak so much to like today's kind of culture of comic books and references. And it's very much kind of like finger on the pulse, but of a kind of pop culture of 2023. <laughs> um yeah which is unusual it is it's weird to kind of watch it and just kind of be like that is relevant 20 years later that's unusual um i agree totally but yeah it's cool and i like the whole cast um a young ben affleck you know which is plays a scumbag um what a dick yeah real dick um he auditioned he auditioned for ts I read as well. I didn't Did know he? that either until recently. Interesting. Yeah, he, I think everyone, well, apparently everyone auditioned for TS's role. Hmm. Um, but they liked uh, Jeremy London because of the stuff he had done before. And I think, uh, again, I read, so I don't think I know, but Ben Affleck and Matt Damon had just got Good or Hunting. Um, they just got money for that. They just got that uh, optioned. Okay. Cause so it, they were Kevin's... all a bit confused why Ben Affleck was coming in. Yeah, because Kevin Smith, uh, I think is the reason why Good Will Hunting got financed. I think okay. from from memory, because Kevin Smith is a producer on Good Will Hunting, I'm pretty sure, like an executive producer. And yeah. it's because he put them in touch with uh, Miramax um, to finance it. Okay. Um, which is a really weird like it's kind of like how you go from like more rats to essentially the good hunting. hitting good one hunting. Yeah. Which is amazing. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it still holds up. Like I still find it really funny. Um, the relationship between like TS and Brody is great. Um, their dialogue is just amazing. I think again, kind of like clerks was the, the writing is very uh, just like the kind of conversations you'd have with friends. Like, it doesn't feel like movie get, dialogue. Because the first time you really feel like that, because it, it feels quite different to Clerks quite early on, I think. But then when they're sitting down, when they've both been dumped and they come together in, uh, I think, is it Brody's uh, basement? Or yeah. mum's basement. And they're both sitting there and they're talking about, like, he's saying that he got... The reason he, he doesn't really understand why he got dumped. He did everything right, obviously, which he did not. 
yeah. TS is saying that he was going to propose, and it's like it's like those little bits of like, oh, where are you going to propose? It's a whole universal tour. Oh, yeah. what like what ride? He's like, like Jaws, but it's so there's no humor. There's no like they're not laughing at each other. It's just like a very proper lad conversation. They're like, yeah. you know, the females watching it think like that sounds fucking awful. <laughs> yeah. But um, I mean, even the men, even the men. I mean, when I was younger, I remember when I first saw it. I I remember laughing, but I. Even now, I'm like, oh man, that's you know, my wife would not like that at all. But, but it's those, those stretches of dialogue that you get with, yeah, oh yeah, I'm yeah. Jaws right. Yeah. But those stretches of dialogue, and that you don't get it as often as you get in Clerks because Clerks was obviously shot, there were lengthy scenes, right? Mm. But this is like got more cuts in it, and you only get it in, you get it sometimes, but not as often as, as you did in Clerks, but it's still there. And those are the scenes that I really like, like the scene where they're, when they're talking on the bench about, it's like very stupid things like um, about the food court and the cookie shop being part of the food court. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's such a pointless conversation, right? But it's yeah. also nice to, uh, fun to watch and to hear that dialogue between those two characters. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I like, I like those two together when they're in those scenes. Yeah. It's, it, they, it, it's written really well where it just feels natural. Like it feels as if, the actors it's kind of like just a camera following the actors and the actors have been friends for years like it doesn't necessarily yes. feel like they're having to like read a script or learn lines or whatever like it just it feels so natural um and obviously there's bits in it which are really heightened like the whole plot with jane silent bob is very extravagant in terms of like trying to destroy the stage and the way that they do it um i, I wonder i'm trying to think about what i thought when i first saw that because i would have been I mean, I'm 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 not old now, but I'm in my late thirties. Like, <laughs> well, thirty six. But I must have seen it in my teen ages. I I mean, it was a long time ago. I saw it definitely the first time. But I don't. I can't remember if I thought those bits were like really funny. You know, when like Silent Bob's on on stage and he's doing the Batman thing, and then he comes down and like when they're running away from um, what's the security guard called? I don't know. Uh, they they force. Yeah, yeah. The Lee Fours, yeah. And then yeah. they, you know, they 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 go up in the with the back gun and everything. But when I watched it, because I watched it again maybe two, three weeks ago or something like that, or probably a bit longer, and I thought it kind of was a bit cringy. Yeah. So I was kinda yeah. like, hmm. Like but again, I can't remember what I thought about it the first time, to be honest, but I just thought hmm. those those bits, those extravagant bits that you mentioned, they're I mean, there's Jane, Silent Bob, isn't it? Like that's yeah. just them in a nutshell. Those sort of yeah, scenes, yeah. and you, you don't, you can't say you enjoy because I really like Jane, and Silent and Bob, Strike Back, and the Jane, and Silent and Bob reboot. So I can't, can't yeah. say how much I like those later down the line, and then be like, these bits were a bit yeah. weird. But it, I think it's just in the, I think it's just because those films are those. It's like that the whole time, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is sort yeah. of like there's like a you've got your bromance thing going on with uh, T S and Brody, and they've got all the girl troubles, and there's mm. like. The Mortis is full of these characters that you say like interconnect and they you know they bounce off each other so on. And then all of a sudden there's this scene with Kevin Smith up top and he's swooping down, he headbutts through a changing room and and uh it, it kind of I don't think it felt out of place when I watched it again recently, but it just felt a bit I don't know, just felt, it did I guess it did feel out of place. It's de- yeah, it's, it's definitely like the whole film. They're the sections that you can kind of feel are like uh more surreal i guess um yeah. which i think like is I the don't thing know if that... i would say you would you would cut them either like i don't know no. i don't think the film works almost without them but it's yeah. kind of like you i wonder if i mean i'm kevin smith probably wouldn't change a thing about it because i'm sure he no matter what happened to it originally he probably loves the film because it's his first like major like hollywood film but i wonder if he would change it slightly like would he would he do it a little bit differently? But then I think again, like he's only released something like Jane Silent Bob reboot a few years ago, so probably got the same mentality about it. But it just it did feel out of place when I watched it recently. But I don't, I don't have a logical reason why it felt so like, ugh, that's not good. It it could just be because it's like, it's so obvious, like you know when he's on the when he's on the truck and things like that. I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't know why I'm trying to say, but it just felt <laughs> a bit weird. Yeah, no, I can I can see it in that like 
that is the the section of the film where I think it does go from being kind of very realistic to it takes yeah it takes you out of it yeah that's what, it, that's it what does, I'm trying to say it, it, yeah um, but I think you're right without it that maybe the film comes across as more serious in tone yeah which I think you kind of because like Clerks whilst funny is also quite serious in the sense of um like it's it's talking to kind of your average person it's a, you can just literally go and see your friends on the screen that's clerks is that it's yeah its pitch was always you know um about seeing yourself presented on screen and more rats is kind of the evolution of that um in that it's about you know comic culture and nerdum and all that kind of stuff um and so I think, yeah, if you remove the Jay and Silent Bob part of it, it would almost be a little bit more of a serious rom-com kind of thing. Um, like, yeah. obviously, there are comedic beats. Maybe between... a bit of a downer? Possibly. I don't know. I, I, I just, I, I think the points in which Jay and Silent Bob pop up, it sort of does just kind of bridge the gap a little bit between the scenes. Um, like, yeah. the, the scene where they meet Jay and Silent Bob and Bob's trying to do his um, Jedi mind trick is great. Like, I really like that. Yeah. Um, and that feels like this natural kind of crossover of the two things that there's always these two characters that are very eccentric and kind of very out there. Um, and so it does feel like you almost need those. Um, but it is... Maybe, it's, maybe, maybe I would have enjoyed it more if it was just those kind of scenes with Brody, TS, and Jay and Simon and Bob and they're having these moments together. I mm -hmm. feel like on this watch i could have done without the those crazy bits but yeah yeah sorry i interrupted you no no it's fine um and like the easter bunny is great i always enjoy that that they just go and yes the shit out of Batter him. yeah, yeah. <laughs> i always wonder why like i can't understand why brody ever just accuses the easter bunny straight away like <laughs> why not let jay and silent bob on uh ben affleck's character shannon yeah yeah like, Great. I, I can't remember if I missed something, and I don't. I didn't catch it this time either. But I remember thinking, I've seen it more than the first time I ever watched it, and on this occasion. But again, really spread out. But I think every time, I'm like, why doesn't he just say it's uh, it's the guy in the suit that he? Yeah. It's just one bit that I I really do like, even though it's just the stupidest thing is the boy on the escalator. Yeah, and he's always like, like kid is on the escalator a, again. everything else is going wrong in Brody's life. He's just like that fucking get on the escalator, and then. <laughs> yeah time he's about to get beaten up because he's in the comic queue and then there was like there's a boy trapped in an escalator and it <laughs> kind of just heightens the fact that Brody for all his shit and T.S. does say it quite late on in the film he says that there's always like there is a nugget of knowledge in there like for all this shit that you're spewing <laughs> yeah. every now and again and the kid in the escalator is one of those things he's like this kid like yeah. he's gonna get caught parents are gonna be panicked everyone's gonna run over and then it does happen I, I think that's very well like because there's a lot of that. They, there's a lot of circling back as well. Like mm. Kevin Smith's written things throughout, and then he comes back to it. Yeah, so, it, like that, that is. Bit. That's always the thing that I think. Like as we go through the in depth, is always quite interesting as well as like the way that stuff is weaved in and the way that characters are related yeah. to each other. Um, like you know, there are characters that are in like Dogma or Chasing Amy that are just relatives of other characters from clerks or from more rats or whatever and it's it's nice to kind of see how he's like yeah. weaved all that together um i'm even more interested now because again because i haven't seen so many for so long and i i'm watching these probably closer together than i ever had but i was trying to think in my head is james silent bob like who i think ben affleck is isn't he holden in james yeah. silent bob he's not yeah he's, he's not, holden he's in... i don't think he's ever shannon again is he no i know because I I, yeah chasing amy he's holden mcneil um that's the surname. And then yeah, that's the that's kind of the role that he then plays several times. I think yes. the only other time he oh no. Yeah, the only other time he plays a different character, uh, it will be Clerk Dogma. Three. Oh, and Dogma, yeah. And Dogma. Yeah, yeah, yeah good job. Because in um, the reboot, Ben Matt Damon is he's Loki again, Loki, isn't he? Yeah. But he's yeah. But he's Loki playing is he Jason Bourne? Do I remember? Something. Uh, something like that, yeah. Or he talks about yeah. anyway. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> but yeah, 
Um, it's all, yeah, it's all the weaving and the connecting the characters throughout the films, which I'm looking forward to seeing again now because mm. I can't remember who shows up and what, and I don't remember. Like, I was trying to think about TS and, and Jeremy um, London. He, I don't think I don't he's think in he's anything in... else, is he? No, he's not. They've talked about, um, which is kind of apt for this, but they've, they've talked about doing like Twilight of the Mall Rats, so it'd be like a sequel. And I know yeah. for a while they talked about it being a series. And then I think Kevin Smith towards the end of last year said that there is a bit of movement on it actually happening, but I don't know if it's a film or a series, but that'd be really cool just to see the two of them kind of come back and see how they would do more rats in the current age of like the MCU and DC and all this stuff. Um, yeah. Because the more rats that you kind of get is before like comic book films have gone mad. Like if it's in the nineties, you had, Batman 89 and Batman Returns, right? And I think yep. possibly Batman Forever like around the same time. Because I think Batman and Robin was 95, 97, it's not that. Yeah, I think it was yeah. 95. Um, so like it, it hadn't quite hit the peak. Like you hadn't had X-Men or like even Blade. Um, like those kind of films that sort of started cementing superheroes into everyday culture. So I'd be really curious to see how he would take these characters and then put them into modern day and kind of see how they feel about all of this stuff. Because like, that's one of the great things I think about more rats is that you get opinions on pop culture at the time, like how people feel about certain aspects of stuff. Um, and that's, that's kind of the funny stuff is to, that's almost like your everyday conversation is where you're like, oh, that's an interesting angle on something. Yeah, it would. Um, yeah. And like... I like uh, Ethan... Uh, what's his name? Serpley? Is it? The guy who that? plays... Um, is that the guy who's looking He's at in My Name is Earl as well. Yeah. Yeah, the guy. But it would be nice for him just to be in whatever they do next and he's still looking at the painting. Or, yeah. Or some other version of a painting and he just can't get it. Yeah. I love, I love that scene where he shouts at the kids as well. Just out yeah. of the blue. It's poor kids, yeah, They're stupid, and he gets he's so <laughs> loud with it as well. Like he's just like he's the funny, he's not real. <laughs> so good, so good. I really like the um, like. Oh, you go. Yeah. No, you go. No, you go. No, you go. Oh, uh, I was just gonna say I really like the flea market as well. Um, I feel like yeah. that's something that is very quotable. Somebody texted me the other day. I won't say who, just so that they don't get in trouble at all. But they said they were on a a meeting. Um. And they text me saying, um, somebody on this meeting keeps saying focus. And all I can think about is them saying fuckus. And he was like, what's that from? And so I replied and I was like, oh, it's from Mallrats. Um, it's, yeah, it's Brody who's like, yeah. she says fuckus. And he's like, that's what I was thinking. Um, yeah. And like, that always kills me. Like, that whole scene is just really well done where it's sort of like you've got Brody going into it um, with the, like this is going to be great and then you've got ts being like this is gonna be awful and then they switch that ts gets really into it yeah, and he's the one that's like oh my god um yeah, that's just, go. yeah that's so well written because it's really hard like just from a writing point of view to um change your character's motives like just through a scene um because there's a lot of like legwork there just as like just as a writer to to kind of get them to switch um and it's done so naturally as well like it just all works it sort of shows Brody kind of in out of his depth that he was kind of like this is gonna be great and then he's like oh my god um it's just yeah and then TS kind of getting the thing that he didn't know he needed I just yeah I love that like yeah I feel like Kevin Smith did, does those things really well where he can kind of just yeah I think so as well like really kind of switch up a character and stuff um yeah, so stuff like that always. Gets I feel like I remember when I think about Kevin Smith's writing. I think that's why I, I love Dogma as much as I did when it first came out because I, mm -hmm. I, I haven't I haven't seen it in a, in a while. But I I keep saying that like I like I'm in my eighties, but it has been a long time since seeing it. But I just remember a lot of the scenes stood out because of the writing mm. between like Ben Affleck and Matt Damon and everything. So, but those those scenes that we said like. Uh, especially when it's like the Brody and TS scenes in this. I, I, I love that stuff. Like that's yeah. why I love Clerks so much. Well, I love Clerks 2 so much. Mm. Clerks 2 has got some of the funniest dialogue Amazing. ever yeah. when it's just those like 
those characters just on their own with nothing else going on around them. Yeah. Because there are bits when like someone someone walks through the door and things and then there's like a three or four people in there, but often there's just two or three of the main characters and it's just it's so well written. I I wonder how easy it comes to Kevin Smith, that sort of stuff, because you know, with the comics and everything like that, and especially with the way Brody talks, I wonder I wonder if it just like falls out of him when he's writing or if it's uh no. I don't know. It must it must be a, a challenge in some aspects, but it just seems so natural. Yeah. Some of the conversations. Like I it, imagine him sitting there and having these conversations with Jason Moose and everything. So it really does. And like that's a, like clerks, I think I said about it on the in depth, but clerks feels like conversations you would have heard. Like the Star Wars conversation about like contractors and the Death Star and stuff like that. That feels like conversations you just hear and then he's been able to kind of inject it into a script. More Rats is kind of like, whilst it still feels the same where it's conversations you've heard, it also feels very much like it's hearing two sides of the same conversation and it's just perfectly written together. Um, like how two people approach the same subject and stuff. Um, I, yeah, just I think he always nails it when it comes to dialogue and characters. And um, yeah, it's just nice. It's It's kind of an impressive feat um to to achieve i think i also like more rats because it's all in the same day as well like mm. it's quite nice like there's like you know they're all dressed the same pretty much the whole way through and they're all just there on one day and like with, with malls in america they are quite far away generally from where you are like it's a certain distance so you do spend most of your day there mm. so i you know i like the fact that there's so much going on but it feels it feels you know you don't get bored that it's like not a different day or a night time or there's time has passed it's all very quick and it's all happening very fast like with the so it's like ts saying that the uh with the girl that he inadvertently killed because he made a, a fat comment and she's she's died is that that whole thing is spread very quickly like there's the i can't remember yeah. what the girl's name is the 15 50 year old girl which is really weird as well right yeah like, i know that's the whole point in it but i couldn't i couldn't really remember the ending i can't i couldn't remember ben affleck's character getting arrested yeah. um i didn't think about it until the end and then when they did the video i was like oh yeah okay now i remember but at the time i was like 15 like yeah they're just yeah. putting it out there aren't they that she's 15 and she's sleeping with all these men and everything like that yeah but i don't i don't know that's such a weird thing isn't it like they yeah. probably probably would i mean probably be a really big deal these days if you put that out there in, yeah, yeah, yeah in the cinema but this feels like no one blinks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, TS kind of looks a bit like unsure about the whole thing, but yeah. Cause she's writing a book or something, isn't she? About like male. Yeah. She's writing a book something. about like male gays and stuff. But even when, yeah. it's even weird when Jason Lee sat, sits next to him, he's like stroking the back of her head. <laughs> yeah. It's like, this is really weird. Yeah. I'm not sure when that he's, when they sat next to her, I was like, oh yeah, I remember yeah. she's young. But then when they were like, oh, she, I was like, I think she's like 16 or 17 or 18. I can't remember. But yeah. when she's 50, I was like, what is Kevin Smith written here? Like, just it's, yeah. obviously, it's probably written just to get to the the end part with Ben Affleck's character getting arrested. Yeah, getting arrested. Yeah, yeah. Very strange. Anyway, yeah. with the rumor stuff, that's what I was going to say. That's what I was saying. Anyway, that because it's all in one day, the whole rumor thing go all, all the all the gossip goes around very quickly, and it happens very fast, which is mm -hmm. always quite fun. Like, yeah, it's like gone around. So, and, it, and it's I the like same that. in the mall as well with the like. The, the talk show going live that there's sort of yeah. the talk through the mall that it's like they're setting up a stage and all this thing's happening and like Jay and Silent Bob yeah, like, it's funny when he gets there as well he's like what the fuck is that stage like yeah. it's like oh yeah they're doing this I like, no the Easter yeah. thing was built like weeks ago <laughs> yeah. down there because he's like it's his mall basically and then yeah. ironically he doesn't know that Stan Lee's going to be there yeah which is um amazing is pretty funny his conversation I read about Stan Lee as well, as well. It's sound, it is good, but I, I did read in that big book, uh, Kevin Smith, uh, Secret Stash book, uh, that Stan Lee, when he, when he read the pages, he wasn't happy because he didn't want to talk about the love of his life leaving because he was married and he, he thought if his wife saw it, then she would be upset about it. Uh -huh. So he asked Kevin Smith to write in the fact that TS had set the whole thing up. And uh, Kevin Smith was like, I'll do whatever the fuck you want. Like, <laughs> just please be in my film. Because he yeah. <clears throat> he wrote the part 
under the name Stan Miller, which was a cross between Stan Lee and Frank Miller. Mm. And then when he brought the pages, whoever the producer was or someone was like, who is this character and who are you writing? Is oh, I guess in an ideal world, it's supposed to be Stan Lee. It's like, yeah, I know Stan Lee. I can't get Stan Lee to come and talk to you. And and yeah, like that's how it happened. And that's Stan Lee like, was very happy to do it, other than the whole, he didn't want to say that he chose other things over the love of his life and she left him. So, yeah. That's, it's so that's well done. Bit. And he just look. Like, I just I love the um the way that like Brody asks like the most inappropriate questions possible. Um, yes, and is Stanley's giving like, him like thing and everything. Yeah, and he's giving him such a like heartfelt talk, and yet Brody's still kind of hung up on these very bizarre questions, which are also questions that you'd still hear today. That's the mad thing yes, is like they are, yeah, you'd still I mean, hear sort of questions that. W- it's a lot of conversations that I have at work. I mean, I work in a comic shop and we have weird com like really we always say if you put like a we have you know you have to do things on Instagram and stuff to gain attention. But if you they want us to do more like uh, more and more recently, like put yourselves out there. Don't worry so much about what the products are, just we want people to see you like behind mm-hmm. the scenes. It's like if you just put a camera in our office and you just listen yeah. to us talking, it's the most nonsense absolute nonsense and random stuff. But it is like the stuff that Brody was talking about. It's just utter garbage but it, um but yeah we do we do talk about all that stuff one of the uh one of the pieces of dialogue that always kills me besides the fuckus thing um is uh i think it is that scene where brody and ts are sat on the sofa and they're talking about like relationships and stuff and i think brody says something like i'm talking comics and you bring up chicks and romance and I just specifically yes. like that dialogue because I just thought it's so that's so like relevant to today as well, just in terms of like it's... if you just go out with somebody and you're talking pop culture stuff and then somebody decides to get quite serious and you're like, we were like we're just discussing good stuff. Actually, I uh, it's weirdly horrible that I relate so much to Brody in those moments because I, <laughs> I mean, talk about comics an awful lot. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm married and you know, it's it's kind of like comics, and I mean, definitely in the early years of the MCU, like my wife had to put up with a lot of a hell of a lot of conversation about it. And I'm sometimes I sit back and I wonder how I still have a wife because <laughs> I just talk about it all the time. It's like, uh, you know, I can relate anything to the subject, like comics that I want to talk about. So it's um, yeah, I get where Brody, I get it. Yeah, so, but I mean, I'm I lucky. That, like yeah. my wife has never. Crawled out, crawled out of a window and throwing me a letter and dumped me. Yeah. So the whole yeah. the whole opening scene is so awkward as well because she's so she says so many things that are so sad, like she, and she cries in the bathroom and everything like that. But Brody's just such a dick. Yeah, I'm not that bad. Like I'm <laughs> I'm actually good at relationships, but he uh, it's such like you know leaning over in the morning to play his computer game and everything like that. It's just it's just yeah. a dick. Yeah, he uh, he redeems himself. He does. Yeah. They both have like a pretty good arc in it as well. Like they're both kind of get round to it, um, which is nice. Again, that it's it just it feels just like everybody sort of goes on a journey, even though it takes some place across one day. Um, yeah, yeah, it's just nice. But, yeah. Just think about um, I, I'm not I as you know I'm pretty shit with actress actors and actresses names. But the, the lead character from Chasing Amy. Uh yeah, uh, Joey. Lawrence is it Joey Lauren? It is Joey, Joey Lauren, yeah, yeah. And when she's trying on the underwear in the mall, I remember what again when I saw it. Every time I've seen it, I thought like, what is she doing? Like, you can't try on underwear in the mall, <laughs> like or anywhere. It's not allowed. Like, you just can't do it. Stop doing it. That was one of those things just... though. I wondered if that was like a real thing. Like, if Kevin Smith had heard somebody talk about it or whatever, and somebody had been like, oh yeah, like this girl tries on underwear in the mall and he's been like yeah wait what or she just yeah or she just did it she was just like yeah, i'm just gonna yeah. just pretend because she, obviously she's she's very comfortable with her body isn't she she doesn't yeah. mind like full frontal and all that stuff so you can't like i don't know just doing it and then you get bloody jason lee walking in with some underwear as well she's so stupid <laughs> so wow, but it's stupid. uh i think those are the things like we talk about this, some of the stupidity bits with kevin uh with jay and silent bob but Obviously, the fact that he goes into the changing room twice, and it's the same act, same person. And it's just like 
I can't again, I don't remember if I found it funny the first few times or not, but mm -hmm. definitely in the years that I mean that's what we were gonna say as well when I said it is ahead of its time. You know, you've got like your film sort of like American Pie and everything that came out. Yeah. Uh at a later point. And I wonder if this film came out around that time. Mm -hmm. You know, in those those sort of you know, got like a it's like a chunk of time, isn't there? We've got like your American pies and your scary movies and it kind of leads into like your super bads and everything like that. You yeah. know, if more rights was wedged into there. And the humor was tweaked just a little bit, but it had all the great dialogue that it does have. I wonder if that is a hit at the box office. Yeah. Compared to when it came out, because Which is crazy because that's only a few years. Isn't really... it? That's like it is only a few years, yeah. We're talking yeah. just years, yeah. We're talking, yeah, but again, it's more rights has kind of paved the way a little bit isn't it? it's mm. one of those ones that's probably taken a bit of a bullet mm. but it's gathered an audience and you know those people that did like it probably told their friends about it and then those friends are probably thinking like oh if more rats came out again i would be all over it because again things were harder to once it was at a cinema i mean how long did those things take to come out on like video yeah it's not like now is it like where we're kind of forever is at the cinema and then two and a half months time it's going to be on disney plus and you can watch it at home <laughs> you know yeah. or you can you know, you can buy a film at the cinema now for fifteen pound on iTunes and watch it at home. Whereas, yeah. you know, when Morax came out, there's probably an anticipation. It's not like it's not like work could spread over social media either. Mm. Even when American Pie and stuff came out, but you know, I remember, I remember when Superbad came out, for instance, that spread around our university like there was no tomorrow. It even we had obviously internet was a much bigger thing then, wasn't it? But it's just it kind of like spread like wildfire. But with Morax, I think if it comes out just a few years later. Mm -hmm. it's it's a hit like i think yeah. it is a hit and with the cult following that it has i think yeah i think it would have um it would have done better a bit later and i i do think it was ahead of its time i yeah. can't think of many other films that that i can think of that would be better suited a few years down the line yeah it's more rats probably would have it's a really weird one i wonder what like if i'd been the same age like if i was like 15 to 18 at the time and it had come out i wonder what i would have made of it assuming i have the same interests and stuff because by the time that i got to it superheroes had started making their kind of way into pop culture a little bit at least through like video games and i'd read i wasn't like an avid comic book reader i guess when i saw more rats but i was there at least i, I was i kind of read a few and I consumed a lot of like animation stuff like Batman animated series or whatever. So I kind of had enough pop culture worldliness going into it. But at the time, because it was pretty much like bang in the middle of this period of like, you've just had two amazing Batmans, one okay Batman forever ish. And then. <clears throat> there's a gap there where it's like not a lot is going on until like X-Men, I guess. I guess that was probably the next big yeah, one. Blade and, X -Men X -Men Blade. Isn't it? Um, and so that film is coming out at a period where it's like very much like, I think for comic readers um, and people who are kind of like fans of like, I guess the animated stuff. Um because I guess they would have had Batman animated series. I'm not sure about X Men, but um, yeah, I think probably both were probably yeah, around. So, I would which, think yeah, which like is is kind of why I wonder whether it was that's partly why it tanked is that like it was speaking to an audience that was like just on the cusp of sort of becoming bigger. Um, yeah, because it is so heavily like about comic books and the relationship people have with pop culture and kind of how they really attach themselves and find themselves in this kind of niche um yeah which is great because Bo Brody's in um Jane Silent Bob as well isn't he the straight back yeah if I remember right isn't he working in a comic shop then yeah he's got his own comic shop which yeah is Brody's um does it talk about his talk show then I don't remember if it's like yeah I think he, the talk show sort of said that he yeah, I don't from memory I don't remember that coming back up. Um I also can't remember so I didn't I didn't remember it at the end either. I don't I don't remember I didn't remember any uh, apart from the prison bit with Ben Affleck. I don't mm -hmm. I didn't remember any of the what happened to people. Yeah. Uh, did, oh the did Jaws you, bit as well, I remember. I was gonna say, can't forget the Jaws bit. Um remember the Jaws bit. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't remember if they bring up Brody's, but yeah, he, he's got a comic shop in Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. Um, and then he's in Reboot as well. Um, yeah. And I can't remember if it's Brody in Chasing Amy or whether they changed his name. No, he's um, not. He's not Brody in Chasing Amy. He's got a different name. It's um something else because those those all three of those characters are different characters, aren't they? Yeah, but they like Pretty reference sure, people then because yeah, because that that was the like we'll obviously get to it in Chasing Amy, but Chasing Amy is the one where I feel like there are very direct references to either more rats or clerks, and you're kind of like, wow, this it, is yeah, because they're just playing different characters, aren't they? It's like because Ben Affleck shows up, I think Jane yeah. Silent Bob. Strike back, isn't he? Like three characters. He's, he's um, he's Holden he when they do the. He's Holden. Yeah, and he's, and then he's his other character in Goodwill Hunting in the. Oh yeah, spoofy, which is basically just Ben Affleck. I swear he's like a ranger or something as well. So, yeah, but he, that's that's the thing. It's like you got to take your mind out of it and realize that it's the mm. same actor, but they're playing a different character. Yeah. I mean, he could easily show up, and he could have shown up in Jane Silent Bob as his. Uh, his character is a Gabriel. Is he in Dogma? Is that his name? Uh, is Gabriel and Loki. Yeah. No, Gabriel is. Uh, no, Gabriel is uh, someone else, isn't oh, it? Uh, it's with a B. Uh, it's like Bartholomew Balthazar. or something, isn't it? Balthazar. I don't know. One of those two. We'll get there when we get to Dogma. We'll have these names down. You know. We'll have these names down yet because I always do have their names down. That's my thing. Um. Cool. All right. Well, I mean, I would talk. I mean, there isn't much to the music, and we do normally talk about like the soundtrack and stuff. But I don't. There isn't much to it. I did just check, by the way, just so I didn't make an idiot myself. When American Pie came out, because it's like maybe it came out in like nineteen ninety six, but it was ninety nine, so it was a few years later, like I thought. So we're only, like you said, we're only talking a few years. But I think if it was just shifted a bit, Mm. but I do think more rights paved the way for things like that. So yeah. Anyway, so another time maybe it would. I don't know what kick. I don't know what it kicked off that like comedy wave, but it felt like American Pie was like the beginning of just massive like. Yeah, I mean you had loads, didn't you? It was like American it's, Pie. I don't know if it's a and then... rom-com, but it's like yeah. it was like a stupid adult humor, you know, like your Stifler and things like that, which is you yeah. know again like those characters. Uh, yeah, Road Trip, yeah, things like that. Yeah. Road Trip, hey, eh? was uh, yeah. always funny. I always think of Tom Green with the snake when I think of Road Trip. Yeah, I mean, it's just like trying to feed him for so long. Yeah. It was so I, good when it came out as well. Yeah, the bit I always remember from that, which is relevant to us, is that they tried to explain uh, somebody's exam wrestling. through wrestling, and I was always like, "That's yeah. amazing!" That if you can, but find... I used to that as well when I was studying things. Yeah, I do it. even yeah. now. Like I use and not for exams necessarily, but to uh, I probably said this before. And like, if I, if I can't sleep, if I can't switch off, I try and go through. Like WrestleMania main events from <laughs> all the way from one to thirty nine, and then if, if I if I do that, then I'm like, right, we'll move on to SummerSlam or like, uh, you know, I do it with any like wrestling or or football teams or like Aston Villa's team for other years and stuff. And usually it does work, but wrestling is like, yeah. I've, I've used wrestling for like exams and dates <laughs> and everything. Like, uh, just, um, like okay, so this happened in nineteen ninety six. What happened in nineteen ninety six? Oh, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, WrestleMania twelve, <laughs> like. Remember WrestleMania 12 and you'll remember 1996. So pretty good, but yeah, Road Trip has loads of loads. Of, I, again, I haven't seen that in absolute donkeys, so <laughs> yeah. I wonder if that's still funny. I used to piss myself at all of that, like the you know, when they're smoking, when they're smoking weed and stuff like that, and the uh, the old man has like uh, got like a, an erection when he comes down the stairs. It's so stupid. Anyway, <laughs> so, but yeah, um, you are right. So, yeah. that there is that period of films which was like literally just a few years later, and I think more rats would have said perfectly in the middle of those um yeah it would yeah because it's so. it covers so much the same thing it's just it's very heavily influenced by pop culture um yeah like it's kind of like less about like first time sex and it's more just like how these two worlds of like growing up and pop culture kind of come together um yeah yeah i think the one thing i've got out of this is that how much i would like to see more of that like more rest thing with, with all the comic things and everything like that like you know every, they could do so much of like what do they do with the stan lee stuff now it's like if something they could do as well like yeah now he's passed away and it's a bunch of stuff they could do so it would be uh it would be interesting to step back into that sort of 
yeah hopefully. world and see how well it did i think it would i think it could probably find a better place on a like on a, a tv show like a streaming platform like your netflix or something like mm-hmm. that it would probably get a bit more momentum so yeah all right so what do you um like overall do you want to give it a rating consistently okay rating like Ooh. What would you um give it? It's like a seven or an eight. I would go for a seven and a half. Seven or eight. Because that's seven point five. Yeah. I would go seven, I think. Cool. But that's yeah. again, I it's probably more factored into the watch that I did recently. Mm-hmm. Like as opposed to what I probably would have thought of it way back when when Luke was just a little scallywag running around. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think part of it's also the so, like, yeah. so, knowing so. what comes next like how that yes. universe unfolds um like there's other films in the the sort of series where i'm like each one does feel like an evolution like it feels natural for kevin smith's writing and directing like the more he goes on um like nothing yeah. feels like a step back everything sort of feels like he's kind of getting going um so yeah like the the sevens that we've given i don't feel a harsh because it's it gets great, like so good. Yeah, I think now I've learned how to lose my memory by knocking mm. myself unconscious. That I might do that before every film I watch in this uh, this season. Nice. So it's a brand new experience every yeah. time. So, but I've never seen Dogma yeah, before. Sure. I'm sure my wife will be most pleased. Yeah, Dogma. <laughs> what's that about? What's yeah. this? Kevin who? Ah, oh, don't worry. <laughs> um, cool. All right. Well, that's uh, that's more rats done then. So the next in depth that we're going to do is chasing Amy, and that will be released in probably just about a month's time or so from this release. Mm-hmm. We also have a pop culture episode, which is going to be coming out next as well. And we're going to be talking about The Last of Us Season 1 in its entirety. We're going to talk a little bit about Ant-Man Quantum Mania. We talk about Mandalorian, which we, at the time uh, that episode comes out, will be a few episodes in, and mm-hmm. a few other things as well. So if you enjoy our pop culture episodes, yeah. it will be out in the next couple of weeks, mm-hmm. probably right, Nick? Yes. Also, yes. if you enjoy Just, Marvelous yeah, Mrs. May, sure. what we'll like, we mm. will talk about this as the season starts, but it starts on the 14th of April. So, We're probably going to change our podcast name to the consistently fucking fantastic Marvelous Mrs. May. Yeah. Greatest it's, TV show ever. Yeah. Don't be surprised if basically every episode from then on talks about Marvelous Mrs. May because it's just i can't wait it's so different to what we normally talk about but i can't wait for it oh, so excited yeah right good well if you enjoy nick and i talking about all these things and you can find us on social media that's still a thing uh, you can find us on twitter at consistently pod you can find us on instagram at consistently pod you can type consistently okay podcast on youtube and you can find all our episodes uploaded there you may even see us in our natural habitats talking on a video screen probably mm maybe most episodes now i think yeah probably yeah Why sure let's just say yes all right so we will see you on our next episode then thanks everyone for listening and um you know take care don't knock yourself out don't get glass cabinets smashed on you and um yeah stay stay well yeah see that. Go stay, read well. <laughs> stay well is that a thing stay well no i guess you can stay well if you're already well <laughs> i guess you can well. stay well Yes. That's the first thing I said to myself when I woke up. Stay well. Stay well. Anyway, <laughs> just, just nonsense. <laughs> All right, mate. Well, always a pleasure. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.